Hi guys, I'm coming to you from the couch today. They're doing work in my house and I cannot find a good place to sit. All right, so here we are. Um, on Tuesday afternoon, we had a live and I explained the um, some stuff about electromagnetic waves and I posted the assignment number five um, where you were supposed to kind of pick one Elect, narrow it down. Um, you could research as many as you wanted to, but I, in the end, I wanted you to pick one wave and answer two questions about that wave on a Google form and then go and post a fact about your wave on a Padlet where I had made a column for every different wave. So I just want to go over it today, um, give you some information about electromagnetic waves, and then I'm going to talk to you about the extra credit, okay? Because we do have extra credit assignments available. All right, so on Tuesday, the goal was to have you expand your knowledge of electromagnetic waves and learn about how frequency and wavelength determine how the wave manifests in reality, right? Um, and by manifest, I mean, like, how does it exist? How do we perceive it, like, you know, with our senses or tools, right? So um, we're going to take a peek at that. I know it's a little mind-boggling, but stick with me, okay? All right, so we know from a few lessons ago where I had you click and drag some words into a graphic organizer that there are two types of waves. We know that there's a mechanical wave and we, which needs a medium to get the energy from one place to the other. And that's like a sound wave. And here's a demonstration of sound wave as Bastet is crying from the kitchen. She's not starving. Believe me. Um, okay. So that's sound waves, but then there's these other waves, these electromagnetic waves that can travel through the vacuum of space because they don't need particles. They don't need matter to get the energy from one place to another. Somehow that energy propels itself. And that's kind of a freaky concept. But if you know anything about electricity and you know anything about magnets, you know that there are forces involved and they can kind of launch themselves through the universe, almost like very oversimplistic leapfrog their way through space, right? And we have evidence that this is happening because one of the electromagnetic waves that we are aware of are visible light waves. And we know visible light can travel through space. Observe the photo I have embedded at the top of this slide. It comes from the infamous Hubble telescope, which was a telescope that we launched into orbit around Earth so that we wouldn't get any interference from our atmosphere in the pictures that we took. Think of it as like when you see heat waves and you're trying to look through heat waves and everything behind the heat wave looks kind of wavy, right? Well, that's what the atmosphere does when we're trying to observe things from outer space. So by orbiting the planet, the Hubble telescope is able to eliminate that distortion that comes from our atmosphere, and we'll talk about that more later, and take these clear, clear pictures of space. So one day somebody was like, hey, why don't we point the telescope at this seemingly dark spot in the sky? And they pointed it at a spot that had always appeared dark to us prior to that. And then what they did was they left the lens open so that it could collect light for a very long time. And there on your screen is a piece of the picture that they were able to take. Now, I want you to understand something. Those are not stars. Those are galaxies. We are infinitesimally small and large at the same time. Anyway, yeah. So evidence that light and other electromagnetic spectrum waves can travel through space. We can collect light from objects in space and see them, which means that those waves are traveling through the vacuum of space. And we know that all electromagnetic waves on the spectrum behave the same way, essentially. There's our evidence. Finally, from the very first video, Intro to the Electromagnetic Spectrum from NASA, you were told electromagnetic waves are all around us all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, some new information. Well, new, new to you if you weren't there on Tuesday, right? One, in a vacuum, electromagnetic waves, no matter what their frequency or wavelength or generator, travel at the same speed. They travel at the speed of light. And light travels almost 300 million meters per second. 300 million meters per second. That's like almost a billion feet per second or 186,000 miles per second. Not hour, second. 186,000 miles just like that. The frequency and wavelength of the electromagnetic wave determines how we perceive it. A very small band of frequencies and wavelength is known as visible light. We can see those, but maybe it's got a different frequency or wavelength. And even though it's traveling at us just as fast and maybe right along with those visible light waves, we can't detect it, right? We have a different perception of it. We need tools to perceive of them, but we know that they're there because tools can interact with them and they have effects on things, invisible effects. You have an electromagnetic wave detector built right into your skull. Actually, you have two. I'm pretty sure all of you have two. They are your eyeballs. Your eyeballs detect a very small bandwidth, a very small span of waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. They're the ones we generally set right in the middle and they are known as visible light. Your eyes, your pupils, the dark spot in the middle behaves like a lens and opens and closes to collect the light, which then f goes through the vitreous humor, the gel stuff that's inside your eyeball and then hits the back of your eye on something called the retina. And that information is transferred to a nerve called the optic nerve, which goes straight to your brain. And then your brain deciphers the wavelength and tells you what you're looking at, like the color of something, which might not even exist. But I'll tell you more about that later too. We've discovered over time that there are more waves outside the spectrum of visible light, right? And who knows, like on the top end, we've got gamma rays, right? And on the bottom end, we've got radio waves. But for all we know, there could be waves with even more energy and higher frequency and shorter wavelength than gamma rays and ones with less energy, a lower frequency, and a longer wavelength than radio waves. We just haven't detected them yet. Now, more about that manifestation. Let's say there's these waves are racing, right? These lazy looking radio waves, right? We know they're low energy because if I told you to draw a radio, a radio, if I told you to draw a radio wave, you'd be like, hmm right? And if I told you to draw a gamma wave, you'd have to go more energy involved there, right? But so more energy to generate those frequencies, less energy to generate those frequencies, but in the end, traveling at the same speed and hit this finish line at the same time, right? And that's why we say that it's the frequency that determines the type of wave and how it manifests, right? Because they're all traveling at a constant speed in a vacuum. So it's those differences in their wave structure that determine, you know, what we have to use to measure them, what they interact with, um, and what we want to use them for, assuming we determine a use for them, right? All right, so your job on lesson five was to choose one of these videos. Now the same, you guys watch the intro to the electromagnetic 
spectrum from NASA on a previous lesson, these are the same types of videos just broken down into the different frequencies of electromagnetic wavelengths um, specifically. So you can see that they're all up there, right? All seven of them. And they're not in any particular order the way they are lined up on the spectrum. And your job was to simply watch one or two. You can watch them directly in the slide if you're on the phone, just click the play button and it starts playing right there, right? So you don't have to click out and go somewhere else unless you wanna watch it full screen or on YouTube, but you can watch them one by one or just pick the one you think you might be most interested in. And then on the last slide, you had a, I jokingly called it a choice board. In the end, you don't have a choice. There's two things. It says choose two things. So those are the two things you're gonna choose. It's got the illusion of a choice. Sorry, you're not always gonna have choices, but don't worry, for extra credit you do. So your job was to open the Google form by clicking here. Um, if you do this in present mode, it'll take you right there. And you're gonna put your name, your period, and choose a wave, and it's gonna take you straight to two questions about that specific wave. And those are the only two questions you have to answer. When you finish that and submit it, it's not gonna give you a score and it's gonna show you all the questions. Don't panic, you didn't miss anything. I just wanted you to pick one and focus on that one because it's the same skill no matter what wave you pick anyway. Okay, you're reading the spectrum and you're comparing your wave to some other wave on the spectrum. When you were done with that, you would have to come back to the slideshow and go here um, and share a video fact. That doesn't mean you're videotaping yourself. You're sharing a fact about your video. I guess I could have worded that a little better. Um, and that's on a message board, which is a Padlet, right? So I'll take you there. Let's see what's on the Padlet so far. Actually, I'm not going to take you there because I don't know if anybody's name is on it. So let's stay away from that. Um, and what you were supposed to do was add a note to the Padlet under the wave of your choice. And please don't forget to put your name on it so I can give you credit for doing it. And that was the only expectation for Tuesday, okay? Um, now today I'm gonna post your extra credit. So let's take a look at your extra credit assignment. I'm gonna go over some of the details around it. And then we will, then I'll show you the different assignments. I hope that I um, pick something for everyone, right? The most important thing that you have to understand about this is that if you have an incomplete on your report card that should have been mailed to your house by now for quarter three in science, that basically means that you were failing science prior to March 13th. The last day that I saw you, you were missing stuff. Maybe you didn't turn in your notebook checks or your TOC or you didn't do your homework and you had zeros. Now I dropped one of your zeros. So if you already have, if you look in school tools and you have zeros, that means you had more than one zero. Shame on you, shame for shame, because you know that the class is designed that if you participate and you, if you make the effort, which to me, I have to say something's getting to you, you can pass the class, right? So if you got an incomplete for quarter three, it could have been your, benchmark if you did really abysmal and had a bad day on your benchmark and it dragged the rest of your stuff way down and you didn't hand it in work you got hand in work you got an incomplete and you need to do this assignment okay it's actually considered required for you and everything you hand in i will use to go back and boost that quarter three score because you're getting a number grade for quarter three and you need that number to be above 65 right Quarter four is a different story. Assignments one, two, three, four, and now five are all gonna count for quarter four, but right now you're just getting completion grades for those. So please make an effort and do your best work. If you put IDK on a paper, I don't care that you turned it in, I'm marking it incomplete and kicking it back to you and you're not getting credit for it. That said, if you weren't thrilled with your grade from quarter three, or you just wanna learn more about this because it is so mind blowing and crazy, um, then please, by all means, do the extra credit. I will go back and boost your third quarter score or I will boost your upcoming fourth quarter score. Do as many things as you like. Send me messages if you have questions about any of the activities. Now, on the choice board, a blue link means you gotta go somewhere to access the resources. A green link means you get to work with a group. A couple of lessons ago, I gave you the option to work with group. Here's your chance, right? You can do as many as you want. They must be turned in by May 13th. 
Some of the formats like slideshows or docs for research or videotaping for a news report have to be attached to the assignment so that I can see it and give you credit. Okay, and then it's on you to mark the assignment as done. The next slide just reviews everything that I just told you in slideshow uh, five about the electromagnetic spectrum, right? So I'm not gonna read it to you again. Um, if you need it read to you again, you will click the voiceover speaker on the slide and the, I will read it to you there, okay? But this is just to review the general information. Remember, submissions are due the 13th. It's mandatory if you got an incomplete in quarter three, use the blue links to access the resources, use the green links if you wanna work with the group. And I wrote it in yellow if it's something you have to remember to attach and then remember to mark it done. Let's take a look at the board. Are you ready? Hold on to yourselves. This is the choice board and this is a real choice board, okay? It's not me saying, oh, you have two out of two. This is a choice board with nine options and you can choose one or any combination of options that you want. Okay, number one, we have access to a um, thing called book creator. And basically you're writing a book, pages in a book. You can illustrate it. You can do a comic book in there. It's super cool. Um, and there's the code and you will just write something about your wave. And yes, you may use a group. I didn't, yeah, groups allowed. It's in green, right? And once you put it in book creator, you don't have to attach it for me. I can see it there. So that's why there is no yellow text there. You don't have to attach it. In the second box, we have give a break, breaking news report. This is you doing a video like I'm doing right now. You can do it on your phone. Um, I have the Google Classroom set up to accept it up to 100 mil, milligra milligrams, mil <laughs> megabytes, 100 megabytes, and you can um, send that to me, right? If it's bigger than that, you're going to have to email it to me or share it through the drive. And yes, you can work in groups with this as well. The next square, EMS wave danger, or is it? Click my little friend to find out, and you will be brought to a Padlet that has a short embedded video about frequencies and wavelengths and what are dangerous to humans, and you will attach a post-it telling me about your wave, is it dangerous to us, and why or why not? The next square is a super scary math challenge. If you loved our bubble experiment on lung capacity and calculating what the volume of the hemisphere was to figure out your lung capacity or the amount of gases you blew into a bubble, then you're going to love this one. Okay, so enter if you dare. Are you the artistic type? Do you not want to do too many words? and like to draw and are a better draw than me, or maybe a graphic artist, then do a one pager about your EMS waves or compare it to another EMS wave. You can do this on paper, take a picture and attach it, or use the jam board, which is like an electronic whiteboard. This is not the easiest thing to navigate, but it will allow you to work in a group should you choose to do like this big collage about your wave, okay? Historical research straight up research project. I know you know how to do one because you're doing one in the LA. Um, and this one's about an electromagnetic magnetic wave. Who discovered it? When did they discover it? What was it used for? Um, you know, was it an accident? Was it on purpose? What kind of devices have been invented to use it? Give me a history of your chosen wave since its discovery. The next square is to make a flip book. How fun are those, right? We draw in the corners of our books and then we go and we watch it move, right? If you look on this pad, I made one. I did that. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, but we have a cool app called Flip Anim or Flippinim, and you can make a flip book on Flippinim. Um, if you make a flip book, a little animation like me, it is required that you enter some vocabulary on there, and then you have to attach this file to the assignment so that I can see it or send the link to me uh, in email or in a message on the assignment. And so I can observe your flip book and give you credit for doing a flip book. Finally, everybody's favorite, good old slide presentation about your waves. Show what you know, right? Groups are allowed to work on slideshows together. I can see who typed what and who worked on what slide. So groups are allowed um, and everybody's got to do work so that I can give everyone in the group credit for the work. Finally, another favorite, brain pop. 
Don't forget, we have a username and password for BrainPop. Um, the district has posted it up on the district website. I'll actually add it into the box there so you can see it. You will go to the BrainPop on electromagnetic spectrums and you will either you will participate either in the quiz or the challenge, screenshot your results and attach them to the assignment. So that's it for extra credit. Um, I still miss you guys. And I hope you remembered it was pet day today or favorite stuffed animal. Oh, I should have shown you my favorite stuffed animal. Um, yeah, I posted my pets on the gram and on TikTok for you guys to see. All right, so I'll see you at 12 o'clock in the classroom. There's not going to be a live today, but I'll be in there. Please say hey and let me know if you need any help, okay? Thanks for watching. Miss you guys.